Hello, I am Michelle Gadsden Williams, the former inclusion and diversity lead for Accenture North America. I've been a diversity practitioner for over 25 years of my career in a number of different industries, starting with consumer goods, transitioning to financial services, big pharma, and then professional services. This work has taken me around the world and back again. I've lived in a number of different countries from Switzerland for 10 years to Istanbul, Turkey, and Hong Kong. My work started uh, in marketing many years ago. Uh, I worked for Phillips Van Heusen right out of college. I was their intern and I did that for a number of years. And then I decided I, I was not quite fulfilled in that role uh, in marketing. And so I, I realized that I was almost replicating my father's career. Uh, and so I really wanted to establish a footprint, a blueprint for myself. When I think about my career as a multicultural woman, I would describe it almost as um, like a climb, if you will. And when I think about the term climb, I think about the act of rising or going up with gradual or continual progress. And that's how I would describe my career over the years. You know, I, I, I just had a conversation recently with a, a mentee of mine and we were talking about career aspiration. And there are some of us that have an easy go of it who can take the proverbial elevator up to the C-suite and others not so much. We have to take the stairs with a backpack and no air conditioning. And so, so I think for a lot of women of color, we have a different journey. We have a different um, ascension as it pertains to our career. It ebbs and flows and twists and turns, but no matter um, what your journey is, it will take you that much closer to get to your North Star or your ambition, whatever that might be. What I've learned over the years is that membership into the C-suite doesn't come easy. It requires more than just putting your head down and doing a good job. It requires grit, uh, courage, a keen sense of self, the ability to um, do more than what's required, um, mentors, sponsors, and some other things. When I think about success, and success to me means living a life of meaning and value and every decision that I've made in terms of my career has been anchored around that. My passion is my full force of energy that I exert to anything that I care about. My passion is my why and my purpose is my conviction and they're certainly um, intertwined. And all that I've ever wanted to do and to focus on in terms of my career was to leave a place in better condition than when I entered, but more importantly, to help the next generation of young women realize what's possible. So I implore any young woman starting out in terms of her career is to think about, you know, what are you passionate about? What is it that you want in terms of your career? These are the types of questions that I ask myself every year at the top of the year. You know, what is it that brings you joy? Um, what ignites that spark uh, within me? Um, what are some of the kinds of things that I want to do that's going to differentiate the work that I do from everyone else? Um, so I implore you to think about those, those questions, but more importantly, think about, you know, what is the goal? What is your North Star? What is the dream? And if your dreams don't scare you, then they're not big enough. I had dreams and goals and aspirations for myself that were um, incredibly grandiose. Um, I remember as a young girl talking to my parents and telling them that someday I was going to live abroad and live in Africa and, and Asia and Europe and all these places and I was going to be, you know, a senior leader in all these organizations. And um, as, as, as much as um, my parents appeased my, my big ideas, I think I was prophesizing my future uh, because I've always loved geography and I've always loved traveling abroad on vacation. And so when I had an opportunity to live and work abroad in some of the companies that I've worked for, Novartis and Credit Suisse and uh, a few other co uh, companies that allowed me to have global assignments, I jumped at that opportunity. Um, and this is yet an example of you know, a dream and an aspiration that I set for myself that a lot of my peers and colleagues just did not want to do. So I think it's a couple things. Um, it's having the courage to ask for what you want um, and believing in your, yourself, um, but talking to the right 
um, decision makers within your organization who can make those dreams uh, come to fruition for you. So I think it's 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 more than just dreaming big. Um, it's 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 more critical that you have the courage to talk to those who can make those dreams a reality for you. You know, one of the things that my father would say to, I'm a twin, I'm an identical twin, and uh, my sister, Dr. Monique Witherspoon, um, my father would always say to us, you know, you're not here to occupy space. You're here to make a difference, and it's up to you to determine what that difference is. Well, I believe that I, I found what that difference is for me. And that is the work that I do every single day as a chief diversity officer. Um, you know, I am a quasi civil rights leader in an organization. I'm the one that sets the strategy and the tone for equity and parity and fairness for all individuals within an organization. And so every day um, I approach my work with energy and enthusiasm and rigor. Um, so a lot of this is anchored in my in my why and my passion. I've had the privilege of working for some of the world's renowned organizations. Um, and um, having said that, I've also transitioned into a variety of different roles. And sometimes you, you know, these are decisions that I I don't take lightly. When I think about my next opportunity or my next move and why I'm making that next move, um, for me, it's I know when it's time to move on, when the work is not purpose driven anymore, where I feel like I can, I'm not making a difference. You know, flying stealth in any organization is not an option. You have to figure out what are some of the kinds of things that are going to differentiate you from everyone else. It is incredibly competitive out here. Everyone is aspiring to greatness. Everyone aspires to have a seat at the boardroom table. But you have to think, what are what is that 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 competency? What is that skill? What is that something that's going to differentiate you from your peers that also have similar goals and aspirations? Early on in my career, I had the good fortune of sitting on a board of the Maya Angela Charter School in Washington, D.C., and I had an opportunity to spend some personal time with her early in, in, in my career. And one of the things that she always implored um, anyone in, in her presence was to continue to lift others up, to lift as you climb. And I think that as a multicultural woman, I would love to see more of that. Um, I've had some wonderful women um, that I've worked with and for over the years, and that's what we've done for each other. I would like to see more of that. And so as you're thinking about your career and you're thinking about having that seat at the boardroom table or in the C-suite or whatever your North Star is, think about helping that next generation of young women to see what's possible for her, to understand what's possible through your example and helping her to dream big. So that, that's the legacy that I'd like to leave behind. Mm -hmm.